Okay, hi, this is Michael Ellis, and we're resuming our um, uh, project on the uh, Tesla coils, the Wolverine circuit. Um, so as you can see here, sorry, I'm in the, the uh, um, horizontal mode now. Um, oops, I'm covering the camera. Um, <laughs> playing with this thing, sorry. Uh, you can see we've got our Tesla coil there. There, there, there. All the way down. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay. There's our, um, we have, so we've, I've gone ahead and soldered on two diodes, each facing in opposite direction on the top, uh, lead to our primary coil. So one's positive and one's negative. And I've gone ahead and soldered the ground to the, the or the the bottom half of the co uh, primary coil to the bottom of the um, secondary coil so they have a common ground so that should uh, work nicely and I've labeled it ground there so um, so we have a so we have two different polarities that we can use on the uh, the uh, which we call it the uh, primary coil and we have a common ground so um, I'm going to continue with the soldering of parts and leads and whatnot, and I should, if I have the project box somewhere, oh there it is, okay. Um, I'll have the project box, so I'll do work with the perf board material you saw there. I cleaned it off, well, kind of. <laughs> I'll clean the parts off anyways, burn the board a little bit, but I think it was already burnt to begin with. But um, anyways, got the parts off that, um, so uh, that's should work for uh, what we need it for anyways I'll just uh, put the parts on a different part of the board and um, so we can mount our parts on the perf board we can uh, cut our wire and do that and we can get it all set up uh, according to the schematic which I have somewhere around here let's see if I have the right schematic in the notebook I've been playing around with it so much uh, Actually, here's, well, well, the other one's not much to look at, but, um, I've been kind of messing around with the circuit, trying to get it to work, um, uh, basically it has a capacitor across the, uh, primary, and, um, the, these are the two, um, the two directions the, uh, uh, capacitor can discharge through the coil. Um, and it, you can either have them connected, so you have bi-directional uh, movement through the coil, or just have c one connected so that the uh, capacitor can only fire one direction through the coil. And these behave as our spark gap compared to the um, Nikola Tesla's uh, coils, or Nik Nikola Tesla's, um, yeah, the coils with the spark gap. So the diodes replace the spark gap. And, one of the reasons I chose diodes is because number one, it behaves like a spark gap; it only goes one direction, and it discharges. And um, unless you get a coil charge that exceeds the breakdown voltage of the diode, then it would go backwards. But that's pretty high. I think about a thousand volts for uh, each of these diodes. And um, uh, so, so that's why you have these diodes there. And um, one of the things Nikola Tesla mentioned when he was trying to achieve radiant energy was to have a, um, a discharge of voltage that went one direction and didn't uh, come back the other way. So that's what we're trying to do right here to get radiant energy in this coil and uh, feed the, uh, the uh, secondary. So we're going to create a radiant energy event at the diodes and then have radiant energy through the coil and whatever that comes of that. So, uh, so here's our capacitor. I don't know where the camera is. Oh, right there. Okay. So here's our capacitor, 400 volt, uh, which is plenty more than we'll ever need. Um, uh, resistance or er, um, breakdown voltage. So, um, so we don't want to exceed 400 volts, and it's 47. Um, microfarads, so that's about the capacity of it, and um, so that's a pretty good 
for our project as we're considering uh, filling it with a 9 volt battery and then discharging it uh, through there through the diode um, we have our green diode that's going to be hooked up on the back flow of the battery uh, from the ground and then we have to protect our diode a 470 kilo ohm or 1000 ohm um, uh, half watt diode and, uh, and of course we have our uh, switch which we're going to use to um, connect the battery and disconnect the battery and, um, and oh I almost forgot our um, battery connector which we'll have to wire up so um, so I'm going to get started I'll turn on the soldering iron um, I don't know if you can see that actually here I'll move that so it has a, a temperature rating right here I just turn it all the way up um, uh, uh, it heats up as you can see it's doing right now uh, it has the soldering iron holder on it and it has an adjustable knob on it that's just the kind that I'm using uh, I'm using lead free solder you want to make sure it's lead free because we don't want uh, anyone uh, getting lead poisoning from uh, using our electronics or just the um, uh, shutting off into the air and stuff um, uh, so lead free solder is available almost anywhere um, nowadays they've gone pretty much lead free uh, all across the board uh, I think they still sell some leaded uh, uh, solder for like um, uh, plumbing and stuff but uh, they really shouldn't be because uh, lead free is pretty much uh, uh, the standard nowadays the Rojas or OHS standard um, so that's a uh, silver tin and or silver copper and something a uh, tin I think um, so yeah so I started these on already so um, what we need to what do I need to do uh, I need to get the oh, well, I'll solder the two lines on to the um, to the diodes. Um, black will be our ground color, and white will be our positive color. So, um, so get about a foot length. Uh, here, I'll go back here. Get about a foot or two length, foot and a half. Well, no more than one foot length of white wire or red wire if you're using red. Get the wire cut uh, with your tool, wire cutters, or pliers. Um, you can use a wire stripper to strip about a quarter inch off of the end of that wire. So use about an 18 gauge. Um, that didn't even get it. Oh, there we go. It's about a so we stripped off about a quarter inch of that on our um, diodes actually do the back one first we're going to wrap it around the diode lengthwise oops I'm not doing this very well and if you have like a um, like a stranded wire instead of a like a solid wire Twist those together so they stay nice and neat, and um, wrap those around um, the diode. Oh, it always comes in twisted. All right, there. So we got that uh, wrapped, and then we'll solder it later um, once we got everything uh, organized. So we get another foot of, or, yeah, white wire, <laughs> white wire, another foot. Um, I'm doing it behind the scenes, but okay. Cut off another foot, strip one end, quarter inch, twist it together. Sorry, I should do this on camera so it's not boring. Twist it, twist, twist, twist. Okay, and uh, put that on the diode ok 
Okay, so we got those set up. So I guess we can solder those now. Now the key to soldering is to get a wet, which is a W H E T, not wet like W E T. Um, and that is when the solder actually sticks to the metal and creates a, the best um, met metal um, solder junction. Uh, bimetallic layer is basically what it is. So you want to get this. Uh, actually, you want to clean off your solder iron first to make sure there's nothing. Uh, uh, oxidized on it. Kind of clean off the oxidation. Uh, you want to tin your soldering iron a little bit, but not too much, uh, with solder. And then you want to touch both the uh, lead that you're soldering and the um, the uh, the wire. And then you'll um, introduce a little solder and let it soak into the wire and the lead all the way along hold it there till it uh, absorbs into the metal and then you're good you've got a good junction and you'll do the same with the other one just heating up both the wire and the lead at the same time so you want your tip to touch both the the uh, the uh, strand of the wire and the lead to get them both heated up and then you can easily melt your solder to the surface and it will absorb in if you keep hold it there a little bit longer than a couple seconds well actually mine is pretty hot so I just can do it right away and hold it there a couple seconds without burning it burning up my diodes so those are actually pretty he hefty hefty diodes so they don't uh, get damaged very easily so those are good so you have one positive one negative actually I should have ch changed the colors so, oh well um, well these are both on our positive line anyways so they're just different directions um, and of course we have our ground which we'll have to wire up two so I'm going to get a black wire about a foot long too, because this will go to our box. I'll we'll have to cut a foot of it off with our wire strippers. Get a foot, maybe a little more than a foot. Cut it off. We're going to cut a quarter. We're going to rather strip a quarter inch off of it. And I don't know if you can see this on there. No, no you can't. Got to move in a little bit. Okay, maybe actually I just gotta. Move that. There we go. There we go. So you gotta want to get a quarter inch of this raptor on there and solder it on. So we got some solder on there. Get the solder going. There it is. Right. So good junction. Hold it on till it wets. Get that good absorption. Sometimes it takes a little while to heat up. When it, especially with the solid metal uh, wires takes a little while for it to heat up just to know so, that is good as you can see we have a nice strong connection so these three will go to our box and will be our oops got the, and will be our uh, lifelines to the project so um so we should probably distinguish the, between the two somehow I actually have a label maker my ex and my mom's like, like, oh, I almost forgot to mention, you didn't see, I was out of the frame, but, um, I'm wearing safety goggles, uh, safety glasses, or safety goggles, if you have, uh, glasses on, are recommended, well, beyond recommended, they're a must, they are, um, uh, the duty of the solder, or, or the, uh, parent, or, uh, guardian, or, um, 
uh, or the person doing the experiment, doing the soldering, everyone should have safety goggles or safety glasses on uh, in case any there's any sputtering of metal or anything like that, that uh, heated material goes flying, it can go flying, and trust me, I know this because it has gone flying in one of my classes. Uh, it, heated metal did go flying. Uh, it can go flying because you're working with uh, tensile metal uh, pieces and it can go flying uh, if it does. And um, so anyone in the room, the same room, uh, watching the soldering taking place needs to have safety goggles or safety glasses uh, just because um, hot metal can go flying uh, and you know it can catch you in the eye and if even if you have a contact in uh, it'll melt your contact to your eye or burn your cornea or any sort of nasty stuff like that uh, and glasses are not enough you can get around glasses and trust me I know that so onward um, let's see I guess we'll start continuing our soldering odyssey with our perf board so let's get going on that so let's see what's a good piece of that okay so you're gonna take your perf board and I assume yours is brand new and whatever if not um, you're, you're like me and you're just reusing an old piece that is all burnt up and has solder on the back <laughs> Well, um, so we're going to start with our capacitor, which we're going to put in one, one little position. And um, your capacitor is probably brand new, so unless you salvaged it from uh, another project like me, uh, it might take a little uh, convincing to get, in, uh, uh, to get in the perf board there. So... Uh, so you can clearly see that the um, the uh, positive. Oops, there's a little more to that. Actually, might have to use pliers to pull it through all the way. So you can clearly see that the negative, the negative will be marked by uh, um, marked clearly. Um, the negative terminal will be marked clearly. If it is not, it is the shorter of the two. That is also the way it is indicated. So uh, if you still can't tell, um, it's probably not polarized. If it is polarized, it will be clearly marked or one of the leads will be shorter or longer than the other one, respectively, indicating a positive. Positive is always longer shorter is always negative unless it's been cut or is from another project or reclaimed then it might be different so always go with the marking on the body first and then if it's you can't tell resort to the uh, lengths of the pins or the legs rather of the um, or the uh, electrodes rather coming off the uh, the, uh, the uh, component Okay, so next we're going to mount our. Actually, we should solder that. Solder that down. Or, I don't know. Um, yeah, so we're gonna solder that down. Um, so you can see there's little metallic uh, circles around the uh, project board. Um, so perf board rather. Um, those metallic pads are what your solder attaches to when you solder the project down. Those hold the pins in place and mount your um, uh, your component. So we're gonna take a take a opportunity to I don't know if I can yeah I can get that in there. Uh, maybe not. I might need some convincing there we go. Get that out of the way that one damaged. It's too hot. Don't need a battery. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the pads there. So um, so the key will be to make a little um. What would I don't know best be described as a little um. 
a kind of a curve from the uh, pad to the lead like a kind of a u-shaped almost or half of a u-shape uh, leading out to the lead and that would be considered an optimal uh, soldering job so um or the optimal amount of solder try not to ball it up or anything so touch down the lead and the pad and then introduce your solder uh, slowly after it has heated up and the solder should take to the pad oh god it's not going to solder does follow heat it's not hot enough yet okay I just soldered the other pad okay <laughs> Okay, you got to hold it there for a couple of seconds. I didn't. I forgot to tin my soldering iron. Okay. Now it's wetting from the tin that was on my soldering iron. So I can add a little bit of solder. That's a little too much. Because the other one next. Uh, didn't even. Uh, well. That's a bad job. <laughs> Sorry. Don't go back to it and redo it. Because that'll make things worse. So the ideal job is to heat both the pad and the component leg or pin rather. Heat it until it's nice and uh, warm and accepting of solder. Feed the solder in and a little bit until it wets. Then there, that one was perfect. Perfect. That one was perfect. Alright, and we may continue. Alright, so I'm probably going to get all my uh, components fixed down uh, before I um, attach them up and uh, feed them into the box. So, um, so, uh, oh, okay. Um, for the switch and the LED, both of those are going to be mounted in the box, or sticking out of the box, rather. So, um, so those are going to need leads uh, of wire, um, and so I guess the resistor is the only other thing that's going to be, or oh, and the nine volt uh, battery holder are going to be the only other things mounted in the um, in the perf board. So, uh, here we go with our resistor, so we're going to place that in a far-flung place uh, on our board. As you can see, we've made it about uh, four spots apart there, flat against the board. You always want your uh, components to be flat against the board, and uh, with the leads extending, Oops. And resistors don't have um, don't have polarity, so um, they can be used either way. No, that one didn't take. Oh yeah, don't do those. And this, are, this soldering is just to hold it in place, so don't get too caught up on it if it's not going well. If you're burning up your board or whatever, just as long as it's anchored is okay. So we're going to use the ends of the leads. Oh, God, that's just broke off. Okay. Excuse my language. Um, all right, so... Uh, that's really bad, actually. Wonder if uh, pull the pad off. Okay. Anyways, um, okay. So onto the to the resistor or the I I can't think. Um, sorry, it's late. Um, to the nine volt battery uh, thing. <laughs> so anyways, I will put that, I don't know where, uh, somewhere else on the thing, perf board. 
axle. Fold those over as they stay in place. And this will be our power source. So. Ah, perfect. You can help when I see what I'm doing. No, I didn't. Continuing on, so we've got our components all secured down to our perf board. Check, check, check. Okay. Um. Next, we're gonna solder our um, components leads onto our individual components. So we'll start with our LED. So our LED is going to have one positive and one negative lead. It's not apparent on the actual LED. But one leg is longer than the other. Actually, this I was messing with a little bit, so it's a little uh, bent. But one leg is clearly longer than the other. And the longer one is the positive one. And I'm going to bend them apart like that. This is the positive one. Is our white. Here, actually, I'll set it like that. Um, so we're going to cut about a, a half a foot of um, white, oops, there we go, um, white lead, um, hook up wire rather, um, I pull off, uh, or strip rather, a quarter inch, take the longer lead, and Twist on, so you know, twist the lead a little bit too, so it secures on the white for positive or neutral, rather, um, because I don't have red, and, um, because we're, actually it's not neutral, but, um, and black for negative, we'll cut off a half a foot, oops. And we'll take off a quarter inch of insulation. There we go. Twist it up. And we've got the shorter lead. And we'll. Someone's talking outside. Twist it all on. You can see we've got a positive and a negative. And then we'll solder those. So just uh, place it over the the um the uh, metal the metal of the um the uh, uh, soldering iron and uh, solder those. Um, those can just be soldered really easily just by um. Um, heating up the wire and the lead and just uh, heating it until it absorbs in. You want to be very careful